Another day, another recap. Today we'll be diving into a sci-fi action movie titled The Dark Tower. There will be some spoilers ahead and as usual sit back, relax and enjoy. In the realm of the Midworld, Walter Paddock is a ruthless and ambitious sorcerer who abducts children from across realms including the Earth. These children who possess psychic powers are strapped to a contraption of Walter's making with the intention of harnessing their powers to attack the Dark Tower. Located at the center of the universe, the Dark Tower protects all realms from darkness but can be destroyed by the minds of children. Jake Chambers wakes up to an earthquake and knows the Man in Black is trying to destroy the Dark Tower from his dreams. While his stepfather Lon watches the news about the series of global earthquakes, Jake's mother Lori reminds him of his after-school appointment with psychiatrist Dr. Hotchkiss. The true meaning of his visions being unknown to him, they are further dismissed simply as bad dreams by the adults in his life. However, even as he looks over his sketches of the Dark Tower and the Man in Black he knows that it has to mean something more sinister. At school that day, Jake gets bullied for his dark and apocalyptic drawing which causes a minor altercation. During his appointment later, Dr. Hotchkiss goes through his drawings and asks whether Jake still believes that the earthquakes are because of the Dark Tower being under attack. Jack believes that only darkness would remain if the tower is destroyed and the doctor says Jake is having these dreams as a trauma response to suddenly losing his father in the previous year. While he waits for the bus to go home later, Jake sees a man with fake skin exactly like the ones in his visions. Suddenly a homeless man warns him to stay away from such people as they are always looking to capture kids like him. At home Lori informs him about a special clinic having contacted his school for the treatment of kids going through a difficult time. Seemingly uninterested, Jake agrees to spend time at the clinic for a weekend. Later that night he takes down all of his drawings and urges himself to not have any more dreams of a strange man and an apocalyptic world. Instead he not only comes across Walter in the midworld, but he also sees Roland Diskane, a gunslinger. In Jake's vision Roland seems to be immune to Walter's magic but his father succumbs to it and unfortunately meets his end. Upon seeing a mansion later, Jake abruptly wakes up the next morning with a strong feeling that he can find it. He posts online to try and look for confirmation that the mansion is located in New York. Just then, Lon informs him that the representatives from the clinic Lori mentioned earlier had arrived to pick him up for the weekend. When Jake meets the intake administration supervisor Jill and the driver Toby, he realizes that they have fake skin with seams like the people in his visions. He desperately tries to convince his mother about it but Lon shuts him down. Lori assures him that if he feels any danger at the clinic she will pick him up immediately. Just then, Jake notices a reply on his post that lets him know that the mansion from his vision is indeed in Brooklyn. Satisfied, he agrees to go to the clinic. Under the guise of collecting his toothbrush, Jake ends up escaping from the bathroom window. Correctly recognizing Jake's intentions, Jill gets Toby to follow him to the roof. Across the roof and down the fire escape of the building, Jake then takes off with both Toby and Jill chasing him. Smartly outrunning both of them he makes his way to Brooklyn in search of the mansion from his visions. Realizing that it is an abandoned place he enters the house from a side entrance. Inside he comes across a portal to the midworld. He is then sucked into the portal which marks the beginning of his adventurous journey. Just as Jake passes over to the midworld, Walter is notified of an unauthorized crossing from Earth. Intrigued he goes to his portal to further investigate things himself. Meanwhile, Jake comes across Roland and recognizes him from his visions. When Roland seems to be thoroughly uninterested in him, Jake tells him about seeing him and the man in black. Understanding that Jake must be talking about Walter, Roland threatens him to come clean if he knows anything else regarding his whereabouts. Jake then shows him the drawing of the man in black from his visions and tells him that he has been seeing things from the midworld for the past year. Seeing the location in Jake's drawing, Roland swears to find Walter one day. To learn where Walter's facility is located in the midworld and to get a proper reading of Jake's visions, Roland suggests meeting a seer in a village beyond the forest. Back in New York, Walter arrives at the abandoned Brooklyn mansion and finds a slither of wood with Jake's blood on it. Carrying it over to one of his lackeys in the city, he asks for more information about this trespasser. Much to Walter's pleasure, one taste of the blood reveals that its owner possesses pure shine implying that it is powerful enough to destroy the Dark Tower single-handedly. Through the woods of the Midworld, Roland and Jake come across the Tahine who works for Walter. After hiding for them to pass, they then take a break on their way to the village and stop for a meal. As Jake eats, Roland tells him about the day of the final stand of the gunslingers when he lost his father. This left him to be the last remaining gunslinger standing in the way of Walter destroying the Dark Tower once and for all. Meanwhile Walter tracks down Jill and Toby to acquire Jake's address in New York. While this happens, Jake tries recreating the Dark Tower and its surrounding circular area in the ground and asks Roland what it all means. Roland explains that all the different realms in the universe exist inside the circle, and that the Dark Tower stands at its center for protection from the dark forces which exist outside the circle. He says that Walter's objective in destroying the tower is to rule over a world ridden with monsters. A while later, Jake is startled awake by an earthquake. Roland calls it a beamquake instead and says that it happens when attempts are made to attack the Dark Tower. He further adds that it is the echoes of these beamquakes that can be felt in Jake's world. 
A few hours later, Jake wakes up to his father's voice, he follows the voice through the dark forest and is shocked to see his father in the flesh, however as soon as their hands touch, Jake's father turns into a horrid monster, fortunately, Roland gets there just in time and skillfully shoots at the monster, shockingly it then shapeshifts into his father but he continues to shoot at him knowing that he isn't real, Roland assures Jake that the monster just creates illusions based on the weakness they sense and that it wasn't their fathers that they saw. Walking back to their clearing, Jake learns that with every hit that the Dark Tower takes, some monsters from outside the circle slip inside, suddenly they're attacked by another monster. Roland urges Jake to run to safety, however after trapping Roland, the monster follows Jake. Somehow managing to cut through his binds with a knife, Roland rushes and shoots the monster, thereby saving Jake's life yet again. Back in New York, Lori and Lon return after reporting Jake as missing only to find Walter in their home. Recognizing him from Jake's drawings, Lori is wary of him, but she was right to do so as he swiftly ends Lon's life. Accessing Lori's memories, Walter then views Jake's various drawings of the Midworld. He even sees the one with Roland, and goes on to shame Lori over sending her gifted son to the asylum. Meanwhile Roland and Jake continue their journey through the forest the next morning and arrive at a village. Roland hands over Jake's drawing to Ara, the strongest seer of the village in the hopes that she can help with the location of Walter's facility. On the other hand, Walter returns with news that they wouldn't need the help of any more children if they could get a hold of Jake. Rightly assuming to find him around Roland, trackers are arranged to look for both of them. In the village, Ara explains that Jake's shine or psychic powers are at a level she has never come across before. She says that it is because of his shine that he could look into their world while being on Earth. Using her powers to communicate with Jake's shine, Ara determines that Walter's facility is located at a distance of more than six months of travel in the northern wastelands. When Roland brings up using a portal to cut their travel, Ara responds that since all portal travel is monitored by Walter, they would need to use one of his bases to avoid getting caught. Remembering Jill and Toby, Jake points out that there has to be at least one base in New York that must be used to get to the facility. Intending to locate this base, Roland then asks Ara to send them to Earth using the hidden portal of the village. Over dinner a while later, the rest of the village stands divided over Walter using their portal. Some believe that it would mean danger for their village if it became a known fact that they have been hiding a portal. On the other hand, disobeying a gunslinger is against the law. When Ara is asked to read Roland, she realizes that he isn't a gunslinger anymore, since Walter owns his soul. On his part, Roland honestly tells everyone that the war they think he should be passionately fighting over is already finished since the darkness has arrived. He says that it was just a matter of time before the fall of the Dark Tower with the continuous hits it is taking and the darkness surrounding their realm. Saying that his interest only lies in getting his revenge while he can, he leaves the villagers to make their decision. Jake speaks to Ara and the others and tells them that he is still alive because of Roland. A while later, as everyone waits for the portal to align, the Tahin raid the village and cut off their power. Asking Jake to hide, their enemies set the village ablaze and start killing everyone in sight. Roland then takes out several members of the Tahin with his gun. Watching the chaos from afar through his magic, Walter realizes Roland's presence and thinks about how his gun is forged from Excalibur's steel. Identifying Jake as the kid they were after, Walter tells the Tahin to grab him. But despite his struggles with his injury, Roland focuses all his powers and kills all the Tahin that dare lay eyes on Jake. Jake rushes to Roland and they immediately step through the aligned portal to mysteriously appear in the kitchen of one of New York's restaurants. Insisting that Roland's injury needed tending, Jake takes him to the hospital. From there he tries calling Lori and worries when he keeps getting the answering machine instead. A few hours later, Roland's health gets better with some antibiotics and he leaves the hospital with Jake. Back in Midworld, Walter compels Ara for information about Roland and Jake, and finds out that they used the portal in the village to get to Earth. In New York, Jake is suddenly reminded of the homeless man and his warning about the people with fake skins. Along with Roland, he goes over to find the man to ask if he knows about any portal. He uses his power to mentally read the location from the man's mind when Roland stops him from further using his shine since it can be tracked. They then head over to Jake's home where all they unfortunately find Lon's corpse and Lori's charred remains. Urging him to close his mind to avoid being tracked by Walter, Roland carries a crying Jake out of his house. Having witnessed Jake's grief, Roland promises revenge and assures him that Walter will meet his end. Realizing that Jake is interested in saving his world, Roland then trains him in some basics of using a gun. He even teaches Jake the gunslinger's creed, reciting which allows the use of the power of the mind and heart. Later, after acquiring enough ammunition for the upcoming fight, Roland is trapped by Walter using his magic. Asking Jake to run away, he is left to deal with Walter. While he isn't physically present, Walter still manages to torture Roland by reminding him that everyone who supports him eventually meets their ends. Meanwhile, Jake is captured by Walter's men and is taken to his base in the city to meet him. 
Facing the portal, Jake uses his shine to communicate with Roland and lets him know that he is going to Walter's facility with him. Hearing him, Roland uses his ammunition to fight through all of Walter's men as Jake gets strapped in. Roland begins fighting through every single man that dares stand in his way. He obliterates them and shows them no mercy. He makes sure to also set off a few explosions. But while this happens, Jake resists Walter's machine, causing only a part of his shine to be harnessed. However, it still causes a deep enough impact on the Dark Tower echoing all the way in New York for Roland to see. Continuing to resist Walter with all his might, Jake focuses on keeping the portal open for Roland. Impressed with Jake's abilities, Walter is forced to walk through the portal and go back to New York to face Roland in person. The battle between them is one of guns and magic. While Roland indeed does very well to attack however possible, Walter and his magic always find a way to turn it back instead. Quite impressively, Walter catches every single ricocheting bullet that Roland sends his way. Eventually though, Roland is knocked out. Following the progress of this fight through the open portal, Jake uses his shine to urge Roland to wake up. As Walter moves in for his final attack, Jake recites the Gunslinger's Creed to inspire Roland to continue fighting. Reciting it with Jake gives Roland the strength to aim his gun and fire a trick shot which hits its mark. Roland continuously shoots at Walter till he falters through the portal and meets his end. After freeing Jake, Roland aims at the contraption that Walter built and destroys it along with the massive compound which saves Earth as well as the Dark Tower. All the children that were abducted are also reunited with their families, and while the news reports grapple with the mysterious solar flare witnessed, Roland tells Jake that he needs to leave and return to the Midworld and asks him to come as well. With nothing left for him on Earth, he happily accepts. And with that, Roland and Jake head over to the portal again to travel to the Midworld together. Thanks for sticking till the end. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you.